Hi guys, this is Ashish from Edureka and welcome to this introductory video of Edureka's free Angular course for beginners. Now without doing any further delay, let us have a look at the roadmap that will be followed for this entire tutorial series on Angular. As you can see over here, there will be a total of 10 videos in this playlist, starting from this one. In this video, I'll be introducing Angular to you and we'll discuss some of its prominent features like modularity, TypeScript support, etc. I'll also talk about different versions of Angular which is out there. Our actual learning will begin from the next video where I'll show you how to install Angular into your PC. Then we'll quickly have a look at the Angular project structure and different files present in it. Then our next video will be on components. Here you will learn what is the role of a component in an Angular application and how to create it. After that, we'll understand the different types of data binding that Angular provides. Basically, data binding is a mechanism by which you connect your application user interface and business logic. Then we'll move on to directives, which allows you to manipulate your DOM. Here you will learn how to use different built-in directives that Angular provides, like ngif, ng4, etc. Apart from this, I'll also show you how to create your own custom directive and use it in your application. Then comes routing. Routing helps in directing a user to a different page or section of your web app. For example, you're on the home page of an Angular website and you clicked on a button for viewing the about section or the about page. This will open the about page or about component for you. This is what routing does. So basically routing helps you to navigate between different different components in your web application. So we learn how to add routes to different components in this section. After we are done with routing, we'll move on to Angular forms. Here we will learn about different ways to implement forms in Angular. Along with that, I'll also show you how to add validation rules or error handling rules to a particular form. Then we'll move on to services. A service in Angular is a class that encapsulates some sort of functionalities which can be provided to the rest of your application. For example, you can put your data access logic or search logic inside a service. Then you can inject it to a particular component or all those places in your application where it is required. So instead of writing the same logic or the code for search logic again and again in all those places where the search logic is required in your application, what you do, you put it inside a service class and you provide that service to all those places. So this helps you to reduce the redundancy in the code in your application. Once you have covered all these so-called building blocks of an Angular application, I'll show you how to make a simple Angular CRUD app. CRUD is an acronym for create, read, update and delete operation. So we'll learn how to implement all these four operations in our Angular app. At last, in the final video, I'll show you how to use Firebase along with Angular. Firebase is a backend service that provides you functionalities like file storage, database, authentication, etc. So we'll learn how to implement all of these in a Angular app and it will be pretty interesting session as you will be creating a full-fledged application using Firebase and Angular. So guys, this was the entire roadmap of this tutorial series. Now let me mention this here again that this entire tutorial playlist has been designed for beginners only. So I'm not going to cover any of the advanced stuff over here. For that, I would definitely recommend you to check out our Edureka's Angular certification training. This course has been explicitly designed for professionals who want to make their career as an Angular developer. So as you can see over here, here is the course structure for Angular certification training program at Edureka. Along with these concepts, you will be also handed over some of the assignments and projects during the training. To know further details about the training, you can visit our website at www.edureka.co slash angular dash training. So I think it's time to start our learning. So we'll begin with the question, what is Angular? For starters, it's a JavaScript framework that lets you create highly responsive single page application. So being a framework, it provides you all those tools functionalities and packages so as to build a website from scratch. But I think you will be thinking like, I know what a web application is, but what about single page application? What is the difference between a regular website and a single page app or single page web app? So let us understand this difference by comparing the single page application approach with that of our traditional website approach. In a traditional application, generally you have a website organized as bunch of static pages. 
Now each time you perform an interaction, for example, suppose you clicked on a sign up button, the request for opening this sign up page will be passed on to your server. Then the server will respond back with a brand new sign up page that will be loaded upon your browser. So each time you are interacting with the web app, the website will contact the server for serving a brand new page containing the response. This is how we used to achieve responsiveness in a traditional website. Now let us have a look at a single page application and how does it work. Unlike traditional web apps, a spa is made up of a single web page that is loaded once in your machine. That is at the time you visit the website. Now suppose you again clicked on a button for opening about page. This time instead of requesting a new page from the server, only the data or content required for the about page will be retrieved. Because of this, spa are faster and much more responsive and gives you a feeling as if you are using a native or mobile application. So this is the overall idea behind single page application guys. Now let's come to a very interesting question. I have seen that lots of people have confusion about different versions of Angular and I have often seen people asking questions like are Angular 2 and 4 same or do I need to learn Angular JS or Angular 1 in order to get started with the newer Angular. So let me clear this confusion for you. Basically it all started with Angular JS which was released by Google in the year 2010. AngularJS is a JavaScript based framework that allows you to create modern web apps just like Angular 2 or the newer Angular. But after a few months of its release, AngularJS became quite popular because of its rich features. But then around 2012 and 13, frameworks and libraries like Ember.js and React.js popped in with a better benchmark results. So the AngularJS team decided to go ahead with a new project which became the foundation of the newer Angular that we see today. As this was an improved version of the Angular JS, they decided to keep the same name except the JS part. The new Angular, which started from version 2, was officially released in September 2016. It is a complete rewrite of Angular JS, guys. So you don't need to learn Angular JS at all for getting started with the new Angular. In fact, Angular community has announced that no further development will take place for Angular JS. So I don't think it would be wise to go ahead with AngularJS nowadays. Now Angular community has adopted something called a semantic versioning approach and have announced that a major version of Angular will be released every six months. So here goes the new version that you see every six months. That is version two, then you get four, and uh, right now the current version is five. And with every new version, you can expect some bug fixes, some new features and under the hood changes. That anyways is the whole point of uh, releasing a new version. But it's not like you have to learn Angular 2 in order to go ahead with Angular 4 or 5. So I would recommend you to go ahead with the recent stable version of Angular. So that was all about different versions of Angular guys. I think now your confusion would be clear that what is the difference between Angular JS and Angular 2 and you do not require to go ahead with Angular JS in order to get started with the newer Angular. Now it's time to have a look at some of the cool features of Angular that makes it so popular around the globe. So Angular apps are composed of modules. Think of modules as an individual Lego blocks in a Lego toy. Basically, an Angular module allows you to group similar kind of functionality together. For example, in a website, you can have a separate model for your admin functionality. Similarly, you can have a separate model for your home page or your about page. This makes your app easy to maintain. So whenever you want to add a new feature to your home page, you will be only making changes to the corresponding module instead of rewriting the entire code. Also, if you're working along with a large team, having people with different kinds of experiences, modularity makes the overall development process a lot more easy. Now let's talk about speed and performance. Angular apps are very fast. Angular turns your template into code that is highly optimized for today's browser. One other reason that makes Angular app highly performant is Angular Router. Though we will learn about routers later, but for now just understand that Angular Router splits the entire app code in such a fashion that only the relevant part of your entire code is rendered that is required for rendering a requested view. It is as simple as that. So it splits your code according to the different views and suppose if you request for an about page, only that part of code will be rendered which is required for rendering your about page. Next comes TypeScript and ES6 support. 
You can use plain TypeScript or plain ES6 for writing Angular app. If you are more comfortable with JavaScript, you can go ahead with JavaScript as well. But I would recommend you to go ahead with TypeScript as it provides you some of the amazing features like auto completion, navigation and refactoring. Having such tool is almost a requirement for any large project. Also, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So you don't need to go through a big rewrite whenever you are migrating your JavaScript code to a TypeScript code. Having said all that, TypeScript codes are a lot more easier to read and understand. And it is also apt for developers who are coming from Java background or C sharp background as it follows the object oriented programming approach. You can create native mobile application using Angular with the help of Ionic and native script frameworks. But it doesn't mean like you have to learn native programming languages as well or you would require much of an extra knowledge other than Angular. In fact, you can go ahead and build mobile apps using the same HTML, JavaScript and CSS code that you have already coded for your web app. Pretty cool, right? And to extend it further, you can build a cross-platform mobile application. That is, you can build the application that is supported in Android or in iOS with the same skill, with the same web development skill, that is HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And with Angular, this transition will be a piece of cake for you. So that is the best part about it. Without putting much of an effort, without hiring people that are good at iOS, app development or people that are good at Android app development with the same knowledge that you have for developing web app, you can build native mobile apps. Now for Ionic, you can go ahead with hybrid apps. Basically hybrid apps are a mixture of native application and web application. Now that we have covered all of its features, there are plenty of other features of Angular as well. We'll cover all those features while going around in this beginner course. Now it's time to look at an Angular application that I have created so that you can have an idea what kind of application you can create using Angular. So let me open my IDE first where I have already opened my project folder. So this inside this source folder, all my source code resides. So these are my components. As you can see, I have a component for my home page, for my about page, for movie details. It's a top movies website that shows you a list of top 250 movies that you should watch before you die. Now for rendering this web app on your web browser, you go ahead with the command ng surf. If you see over here, I have written this code using TypeScript. That's why the .ts extension. And your browser does not understand TypeScript. It's well familiar with JavaScript, but it doesn't know how to render a TypeScript. That's why what I'm trying to do over here is when I execute the ng surf command, your Angular framework you compile your TypeScript file into JavaScript files that can be rendered on your local machine. So I have got this four JavaScript file as my output of that compilation, main.bundle.js, style.bundle.js, then vendor.bundle.js. At last we have inline.bundle.js. Finally, these files are being rendered on 4200 in my local PC. So this is the website that I have got over here. Now if I click on movies list, you can see the website a list of movies. Now if you click on any of this movie, you can see the details about that movie. Now, the interesting thing about this application is it's a single page application. Even if you feel like you are browsing through multiple pages in a website, it's actually a single page being rendered on your browser. That's the power or that's the responsiveness that you get out of your single page application. And how do you navigate between different different view or different different pages through routers that we'll learn later on in our session. So I hope you enjoyed this first video. See you in the next video where I'll teach you how to install Angular in your local machine, which is a piece of cake. And I'll also show you the entire project structure, basic Angular project structure. For now, it may seem a bit confusing or very much difficult, but it's not difficult like that. I'll explain you what each file does in your project structure. Thanks for watching. Bye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.